May the covenant communion of the Most Holy Trinity come upon you and remain with you, your flock, and your mission forever. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you. Blessed are they who hope in the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Well, beloved, it's a truism, but it's actually true linguistically that when the psalmist, King David, when he writes, blessed are those who hope in the Lord, blessed more accurately translates into joyful. In modern day English, Blessed would really more accurately be transformed as joyful are those who hope in the Lord. Amen? So let's begin with this question. Are you joyful? You don't look very happy to me. And I'm not sure why. It's my first time here. You don't look that happy, but I want you to be happy. Amen? And you know, the Lord himself described his mission in this way. I'm not putting words in his mouth. He's putting words in my mouth, Jesus, from your gospel. It says, I have come that you might have joy and have it to the full. Or to put it another way, I've come that Arizona might have joy and have it to the full. Amen? Amen. Would you raise your right hand now with me, everybody in the church? Would you raise your right hand? Happy or sad, would you raise your right hand? And I learned this from John Paul the Great when he would say Mass. Would you say this after me? Jesus, Jesus. I want to be happy. You came for me to know joy. I will not be a sad Catholic. I will not be a grouchy Catholic. I will be a real Catholic, filled with love for you, overflowing with joy, and bring in your fragrance wherever I go. Amen? Now, did you mean it? Okay, so you should be smiling on the way out here tonight. Amen? Amen. And of course, we'll have a healing service too, I understand. So after Holy Mass, we'll have um, a talk, and then we'll have a healing service. And just to give you like a little anticipatory joy, a little hope, I brought with me um, an amazing relic that I think you might like to touch. The robe of St. Padre Pio has been entrusted to me, the actual robe that he wore. And so I'm going to ask Padre to pray for your intentions tonight. Is that okay? And guess what? It's free of charge. There's no charge tonight. And you know why it's free of charge, don't you? Do you know why it's free of charge? Because he paid the price already. Amen? You say it now. Say this after me. It's free of charge because he paid the price. One more time. It's free of charge. Because he paid the price. Amen? Amen. And so we'll have a healing service as well. And we'll ask God to heal whatever healing that you need, whether it's cancer or maybe it's something emotional. I, I find as I travel that emotional and spiritual healings are much more important than physical healings. And I remember one particular story. Shall I share it with you right now? A healing story. It's a bit tragic. It's a bit tragic, but there's also there's a hidden joy we can find. And I'll get a little closer to you now. Will I scare you if I walk out there to preach? Because sometimes I jump up and down and get excited. Is that okay? You won't be afraid, will you? Okay. Beloved, I was working in the country of Belize in Central America where our SALT community has uh, several missions. And one day, 
there was a young man in the hospital. He was dying of some strange affliction. They really didn't know what it was, the doctors there. But his skin had turned a very unusual color. It wasn't normal. It was like a, a mixture of purple and yellow, all of his skin. He was a young guy, I would say 19 years of age. He wasn't part of my parish, but his family had called my parish there in Belize City and asked if I would come and pray over him because we had a wonderful healing ministry and I would say a miracle ministry. All kinds of miracles were happening. And so people wanted to get a little bit of that for their own family. And I don't blame them. A little bit difficult to squeeze everything in. But I had one of my nuns drive me there after my work that afternoon and that evening. I went to the hospital, to the ICU, and I met the young man. And he was kind of purplish and yellowish and in very bad shape, could, couldn't even talk. And so, you know, the church in her mercy says when somebody is dying that you can still absolve their sins with a simple symbol, a simple gesture, if they can't talk. And so you simply ask them because, you know, your hearing is the last sense to go when you're sick and dying is your hearing. So always be careful when you go to the hospital and somebody seems to be dying, be careful what you say. I've heard a few clunkers in my day. Be careful what you say. And so... I asked him, I looked in his eyes, I said, Hijo, this is Father Chen, um, I want to give you the sacrament of anointing, but first I need to ask you, are you sorry for all the sins of your life? And I asked him to blink his eyes if he was sorry for his sins. And that boy blinked his eyes. And to me that was like gold. When he blinked his eyes, that was like gold. I was so happy to see that. I said, good, and I absolved his sins right then and there. I said, now let's anoint you. So I laid my hands on his head and I took out the oil from the bishop and gave him the sacrament. Then I said a few prayers. When I left, I asked the family to pray the rosary for him. Now, he was supposed to die that night. Supposed to die. Was some, he just got back from Taiwan. He was an exchange student at one point. This strange affliction, dying. They could do nothing about it. They called me at the last minute. He's supposed to be, be dead by midnight. But he got out of bed the next morning, 100% healed. Completely, completely healed. Even the doctor contacted me. They couldn't believe it. I said, well, it's, it's the Holy Spirit. It's not Father Jim or anyone. It's the Holy Spirit who does that. Amen? He got out of bed, was completely healed. And he went home the next morning, stronger than ever before. Because when God does things, he does it right. Amen? The Bible says... Look, he does all things well. Amen? Don't you love Jesus? Don't you love him? How could you be Catholic and not love Jesus? Somebody explain that to me. He does all things well. Amen? Now you say, say that to me. Say this. Jesus, you do all things well. You're beautiful. And I love you. Amen? It's the greatest commandment, is it not? To love the Lord your God with all your heart, not your head, your heart, then your soul, then your mind, third, and then your strength. But first, your heart and your soul. Amen? So can I tell you a secret? Don't tell anybody else. I'm in love with Jesus Christ. I'm in love with God. Is it okay to say that? I'm in love with God. Every day, he shows me something new. I learn something every day from Jesus. He even appeared to my brother and I when we were teenagers. But more than that, I, the miracles he does and the blessings, he's so good. And the Lord says, you don't know how good he really is. Ask him tonight to reveal to you his goodness and his love. Amen? Ask for it tonight. It reveals to you his goodness. He loves every one of us personally. Amen? And he loved that boy, and he healed him perfectly. He went home, and I remember two months later, two of his family members were at my parish, Divine Mercy Catholic Church. They were there for Mass. They were good friends of mine, and so I asked them. I said, listen, Carlos and Neri, how is that, that nephew of yours doing? I said, oh, Father, he's 100% healed, like 110% healed. But Father, I said, yes, his mom and dad are kind of worried. I said, why is that? 
Well, he's, he's staying up late at night, and he goes out in his car late at night, and he comes back past midnight, and they're worried about that. And I said, well, maybe they're right. Tell the young man, and I don't mention his name, but tell the young man that Father Jim says, don't do that, because you have a new lease on life. God healed you through the blood of his son and through the Holy Spirit. Don't waste the gift that was given to you, an extraordinary gift. Amen? He should have been dead that evening. He was more than alive the next morning. Don't waste that. Don't play with it. So, yes, Father, we'll tell him. Thank you. Well, I saw his uncle and aunt another couple months later. I said, Carlos and Neri, how's that young guy doing? He said, Father, he's completely healed, but Father, yes, his parents are really worried about him. I said, what now? Well, he's up late at night. He's out speeding. You can hear him speeding his car. He'll run into the house for like two minutes and then leave again. They don't know what he's doing, like maybe getting money from his drawer and going out again. I said, oh, that doesn't sound good. Not at midnight, you know what I mean? You know, my daddy used to say that like, nothing good happens after 9 p.m. Nothing good. Just stay home, pray your rosary, don't go out, and don't turn on the television either, amen? Well, I said, I said to him, man, please tell him that Father... So I was like his, his father by then, like his spiritual father. So tell him that his father, Father Jim, says, stop it. You're playing with fire. You've received an anointing from heaven, a rare gift that you don't see too much in the world, healed just like that of a deadly disease instantaneously. Don't play with that. God gave your life back to you for a reason. And everyone here is in the Catholic Church tonight for a reason. Amen? God is a purposeful God. He doesn't do anything arbitrarily. He does everything on purpose. It's all designed in his love, in his love. And so she, they gave the message to the young man. Would you believe it? Two months later, I saw them again. Carlos, Neri, how is the young man doing now? Father, it's worse than ever. Like six months later. And then I got even stronger. And you see, being a true priest is not being sweet and nice and patting people on the head day and night like this. Oh, you poor little sweet thing. Life has been hard to you. Do what you want. Is that what it means to be a priest? Sometimes you're gentle. Sometimes you have to be strong. Amen? And so I got kind of strong. I felt the Holy Spirit rising up. I said, tell him, stop it. Tell him, stop it right now. His life is in danger. I can feel it. Stop it. You're playing with divine gifts. I could feel it in my bones. Your body is in danger. Stop it. Amen? Was I right or wrong? So they went and told the boy. And three days later, not listening to anything I tried to say to him, he came rushing home at midnight dashed into his bedroom for like 30 seconds. Mom and dad were wide awake in their bedroom, trembling. He grabbed something from his bureau and went out. He revved his car up and sped down the road. And then mom and dad heard the most horrific crash in their life about 30 seconds later. The most horrendous crash. And the car flipped three times right down the road and crushed him to death. Now, beloved, I share that with you at the Holy Spirit's prompting. First of all, for this purpose, the greater healing is the healing of the heart and the soul. Amen? Without a doubt, the greater healing is the heart and the soul to fall in love with Jesus Christ and to follow him. As the Bible says, to look after orphans and widows in their needs and to keep oneself unspotted by the world. That, St. James says, is perfect worship. Amen? In other words, there's a greater healing 
It has to do, beloved, with being like Jesus himself. Amen? And that's why today he will feed you. Did you know this? Anybody tell you? Did you know that tonight, Jesus Christ, God and man, body, blood, soul, and divinity, will be on the altar in person? Did anybody tell you that? God in person will be on the altar tonight. Amen. Never take that for granted. Never. This might be your last Mass. Amen. It might be my last Mass. Today we receive the Lord like never before. And one of the main reasons why God gives us his Son in the Eucharist is to transform you into another Jesus. To become like Jesus. So I'm going to give you a small lesson now about how to receive the Lord today and every day. When you receive Holy Communion, beloved, never receive with your own faith. Trade your faith for the Virgin Mary's faith. Say, Mama, my faith is tawdry. Take my faith and give me yours. Always come up here with Mary at your side. And receive the Lord with Mary's faith, Mary's hope, and Mary's love. Amen? Now, beloved, one saint said this, that one holy communion has enough grace in it to make anybody on the earth, and any Catholic, into a perfect saint forever. One host. One host. Of course, the body and blood of God and so, beloved, how many times have we received Holy Communion? One host has enough grace to make you to a perfect saint forever. Amen? But today, receive him with Our Lady today. The Lord gives his body and blood every day. But most of the time it falls on deaf ears because we do not receive him well. But beginning tonight, ask our Lord and Our Lady, Mother Mary, let me receive your son with your faith, your hope, and your love. Amen? Now I want to give you one more example because I like to put flesh on the gospel and what we're taught by the Lord. Give you one more example of how powerful the Eucharist is. Can I give you one more example? The Eucharist is the bread of saints. It will transform you into a saint if you let him. I was distributing Holy Communion one day at one of my mission churches in Belize called San Pedro Catholic Church on the island. And it was a Spanish mass in the evening and the church was over overflowing. Long communion line. And just me and a, a lay minister distributing Holy Communion. And at some point in Holy Communion, a young man came up for communion and I knew this young fellow I had married him and his wife some years before, so I knew him. I hadn't seen him in a while. But I went to give him Holy Communion, and the grace from the host came back on me. And I stopped. And I looked at him and I said, Hijo, come see me after Mass, okay? Yes, Father. Then I said, the body of Christ and gave him the Lord. And after Mass, that Sunday evening, there was a long line for confession. There always is there, usually from 50 or more people. So he waited in his line, and the young man, finally had his turn came to come sit with me for a few minutes. He came in, and he said, Father, why did you ask me to come see you after Mass? And he got kind of teary-eyed. And so I said to him, well, son, I don't know. The Lord told me to. The Lord. Every Catholic should hear his voice. It's in your Catholic Bible. Your Catholic Bible says this. I won't put any words, right, in God's mouth. I'll put his words into my mouth. Here's what he said. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and they know me. They hear my voice. Amen? If you don't hear his voice, ask him tonight. When you go home, buy a giant box of Q-tips, please, and clean the ears real good. 
maybe with holy water, and then ask God to give you the grace to, to obey the scripture and to hear his voice. Amen? We should hear his voice. Mama Mary did, and she's the, she's the example for Catholics. And so I said, I don't know, but the Lord asked me to ask you to come. He got all teary-eyed. He started to break down. He said, Father, my life has been going to pieces. I said, I haven't seen you in a long while, I told him. He said, Father, when I came to Mass tonight, I was ready to die. And I decided to take my life tonight. And I said to Jesus when I walked in, when I receive Holy Communion, Jesus, if you are truly real and truly God in the Eucharist, then I ask you to tell the priest to stop me in the line and to see me after Mass, and then I'll know you're real. Then I won't kill myself, he said. That is who you and I will receive in just a few minutes. Amen? The greatest honor in the world is to be Roman Catholic. Amen? The greatest honor in the world. And above that, to be Catholic at Mass. Mamma mia. Amen. That's why the Bible says, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Amen. That's who you will receive tonight is the body and blood of the God-man. And he's here to make you like himself. And I got news for you. Jesus has a beautiful smile. And I will know that you've received him properly at the end of Mass by your smile. Amen? One more thing. When you and I die and we go to the judgment seat of God, God will know in one second where you belong. He'll take one look at your face. If you're grouchy, you better start praying because you're not entering heaven. You're either going to down below or to purgatory for about 50, 5,500 years. If you have a little tiny bit of a smile, but kind of like earful, you probably go to purgatory for 10 years. But if you have a beautiful smile when you go before the Lord, you say, Jesus, is that really you? I love you. I've been waiting for you. And he says, I've been waiting for you too. Come on in. Amen. He'll know by your smile where you belong. Amen. Start practicing tonight. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Father God, when we receive Jesus tonight, ask him to fill us with his holy joy. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Most Holy Trinity, we ask you in the name of Jesus Christ, the name above every other name, the joyful name, that you would hear these petitions and answer them most generously. We ask a blessing upon the people of Ukraine in the middle of this war. We ask a blessing upon the soldiers on the Russian side and the Ukraine side. We ask a blessing upon all the families that are involved in this. And we thank you, Lord through the intercession of Our Lady of Victory that this war will stop uh, on our Christian brothers and fighting each other. For this we pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayer. We ask a blessing upon all young people here about the holy vocation that our Lord is calling them to, be it married, single, or religious, and that they may follow that vocation by God's grace, the whole of their lives, with fidelity. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We ask an, ask an outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon Father Jim and his flock in Georgia, a blessing upon all his good works and his mission works that he does, especially we pray also for his work that he will do in Seattle. For this, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We ask the Lord to bless the Holy Father and all the bishops of the church. May they be united, but united in the truth, in the Holy Spirit, and in love. For this, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We ask you, Lord, to bring an end to abortion in our country and throughout the world, and please to give us only pro-life leaders at every level of government, only pro-life leaders. For this, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We want to ask you, Lord, to bless all the members of each of our families. We beg you that none of them would go to hell, none of them. Save, O oh beautiful God, every member of each of our families, no matter how far away they are. For this, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we want to pray for divine healing tonight during the mass and during the healing service. Yes, of our bodies, but even more importantly, of our hearts and our spirits. We will leave here more sanctified, happier, and more in love. For this, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Beloved, the best way to bring our petitions to Christ is through the immaculate hands of Mary, his mother. So we're going to pray that beautiful prayer called the Nimerari, asking the Virgin to bring these petitions and our hearts to her son. Remember, O, o most gracious Virgin, Virgin Mary, Mary, that never was it known, known that anyone who fled, fled to thy, thy protection, protection implored, implored thy help, or sought thy intercession, was left unaided. Inspired by this confidence, I fly unto thee, O Virgin of virgins, my mother. To thee do I come, before thee I stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the Word incarnate, despise not my petitions, but in thy mercy hear and answer us. Amen. Good Saint Joseph, Pray for us. All of you, saints and angels. Pray for us. Please be seated, friends. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, who through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. You will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become 
our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Regard with favor, O Lord, we pray, the offerings we set upon this sacred altar, that bestowing on us your pardon, our oblations may give honor to your name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord, our Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord. Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by your gracious gift, each year, your faithful await the sacred Paschal Feast with a joy of mind made pure, so that, more eagerly intent on prayer and on the works of charity and participating in the mysteries by which they have been reborn, they may be led to the fullness of grace that you bestow on your sons and daughters. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Do you know the Sanctus? Let's sing that together. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabaoth, Pleni Sun Cheri et Terra, Gloria Tua, Hosanna in excelsis, Benedictus, Qui venit in nomine Domini, Hosanna in excelsis. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, 
at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. Story of faith. Friend, would you sing this after me? When we eat this bread, when we eat this bread, and drink this cup, and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord. We proclaim your death, O Lord. Until you come again.
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make us, of us, an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope, Thomas and Eduardo our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and your entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, praying for divine healing, we now dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. 
Lord Jesus Christ, truly present. You said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the good Lord be with you always. Would you offer each other, beloved, a sign of peace and joy? Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you enter under my roof, but only you say the word. May we receive you tonight, O Lord Jesus Christ, with Mary's faith, with Our Lady's hope, and with Mary's love. Amen. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you have already come, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
special gift for you, beloved, before we do the closing prayer. I need my altar boys and brother to help me. These medals have been blessed already. They're the St. Benedict Medal, which is the oldest medal in the Catholic Church. And it's the only exorcism medal of the Roman Catholic Church. They've been blessed already with an exorcism blessing. We're going to bless them a second time, though. And just like Elisha asked Elijah for a double portion of his spirit, we ask now for a double blessing over these medals. Father, would you do the honor? And I'll hold this for you. Father's going to look up the official blessing, which we did earlier. And note, when Father blesses the medals with the sign of the cross, Holy Mother Church asks that you and I bless our bodies at the same time as Father's blessing the medals. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. In the name of God, the Father Almighty, who made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, I exercise these medals against the power and the attacks of the evil one. May all who use these medals devoutly be blessed with health of soul and body. In the name of the Father Almighty, of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and of the Holy Spirit, the Paraclete, in the love of the same Lord Jesus Christ, who will come on the last day to judge the living and the dead. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, the boundless source of all good things, we humbly ask you, through the intercession of St. Benedict, thou pourest out thy blessing upon these medals. May those who use them devoutly and earnestly strive to perform good works be blessed by thee, with health of soul and body, the grace of a holy death, and the remission of temporal punishments due to sin. May they also, with the help of thy merciful love, resist the temptation of the evil one, and strive to exercise true charity and justice toward all, so that one day they may appear sinless and holy in thy sight. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Maybe one more helper can come up, and brothers, go ahead and quickly pass them out right now. Open up your bag and distribute them right down the rows. These medals, beloved, there's a little hook on them. You can wear them around your neck. We should have enough for everybody here. It should be 400 going out right now. If you already have a medal, and I suppose some of you do because you look like a pretty good group of faithful Catholics, <laughs> then maybe consider giving it to somebody in your family who doesn't have one. And I'm going to give you a little hint. You may not know this. Protestants love the St. Benedict Medal. They love it. They have nothing like that in their church, and they love it. It protects them as well. If you already have a medal, receive this one too tonight, and consider giving it to somebody in your family, young or old, male or female. So they're protected too. There is a prayer printed on the back in, in Latin. 
And it actually translates into this in modern day teenage English. Your medal says on the back, it's an exorcism blessing. It says, Satan, take your poison and eat it yourself. That's what it actually says if you translate it into modern day English. So we should have enough for everybody here in the church. If you don't have one, make sure to wear this one or keep it in your wallet, keep it close to you for your safety. If you do have one, give it your welcome. Give it to somebody in your family who doesn't have one, especially teenagers. Pope John Paul, Saint John Paul the Great, he said before he died that mankind is presently engaged in the greatest battle between light and darkness since the flood of Noah. And then he said a second time, just a month or two later, to a group of young people, John Paul said, mankind is in the greatest battle between light and darkness since the fall of Adam and Eve in the garden. And so we need this medal. Amen? Amen? A time of great demonic warfare right now. I kind of enjoy it, to be honest with you. I think it's kind of fun. However, we want to be well protected at the same time. Amen? Amen? We have our offense and our defense. You have your shield and your sword. Your shield is this medal to protect you in Mary's scapulars. And your sword is the rosary and the word of God. Amen? We're going to win this battle. Now, I'm going to teach you my Catholic cheer. Then we're going to bring you the Mass to a closure. I'll come out and give you a little talk on healing, and we'll have a healing service. Is that all right? Can I teach you my new Roman Catholic cheer? Yes? It's absolutely clear from sacred scripture what I'm going to share with you. It's my new Catholic cheer. It's absolutely certain. And it's based on, for instance, this word from the book of Revelation. Every knee shall bow, and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen? Amen. So I'm going to teach you my cheer now. Are you ready? Would you raise your right hand like this with a fist? And would you say this after me? We always win. 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 In the name of Jesus. In the name of Mary. Am I scaring you? Amen. And I love giving a round of applause to the Lord Jesus Christ, to his Father, and to the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. I almost said hallelujah. Now listen, friends, I have another gift for you. And so at the end of my little talk, I brought with me some healing scapulars, the green scapular. And we've had hundreds, I would say thousands, we, we lost, lost track of healings with these scapulars, especially cancer. So we have a healing scapular for everybody in the church tonight. So we'll bring the mass to a close. I'll come back out, we'll have a little talk on healing. I want to give you a healing scapular you can take home with you. Amen? Amen. God is the giver of many good gifts. Amen. Amen. Let us stand, beloved, for the closing prayer. <laughs> Having received the blessing, of your heavenly gifts, we humbly beseech you, Almighty God, that they may be always for us a source of pardon and of salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. Friends, would you bow your heads with a special Lenten blessing? Almighty God, you have made known to your people the ways of eternal life. 
Lead them by that path, we pray, to you, the unfading light, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. This holy Mass is ended. Let us go or stay in peace. Immaculate Mary, your praises we sing. You reign now in splendor with Jesus. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God.
Jim Blunt with us. And just of one thing of note, we have a little Goodwill offering basket in front of the podium here. If you, um, after you come up and um, be blessed, um, then you're welcome to put a little something in it. And, and Father Jim, uh, we're, we're missionaries, huh? We're religious. It's, you know, it's a little, uh, it's a little daunting to pay for these things, but he's uh, he's a busy man, and so if any little little help would be beautiful, and it's much appreciated uh, for help in Father Jim and his ministry. So thank you for your kindness, your generosity ahead of time. Okay, Father Jim. Thank you, Father. Praise the Lord. Well, beloved, I can talk all night long, to be honest with you, but I won't because I think we're kind of urgent for healing tonight. But if you don't mind, I'll get down closer to you. This feels too far away and too formal. So I'll make it a little bit closer to you if that's okay. First of all, I want to give all of you a healing scapular, the green scapular, and share with you a couple stories because Mary, the Virgin Mary, is the mediatrix of all graces, including the grace of healing. So I want to share with you first a story from my own family. I'm one of eight children, and uh, we were born and raised in Tampa, Florida. And some of my family is still there, so I'm used to hot weather. And then I was assigned to Central America for many years. Now I'm in, near Atlanta. And there in Tampa, I, where I first learned the faith, I was sort of immersed in it. And one of the treasures of the faith, of course, is devotion to Mary. It's more than a treasure. I think that devotion to Mary is not a nicety, it's a necessity. It's not a nicety, it's a necessity. We need to enter the heart of Mary tonight. Amen? and begin loving Jesus with her love, believing in him with her faith, hoping in him with her hope. It's the secret to everything. Amen? It really is. We want to be healed through Mary's intercession. Once when I came home from school, my oldest sister, Connie, was crying. So I got home, and there was my sister sitting at her normal place at the dining room table, because there's 10 of us, you know. It wasn't dinner time, it was before dinner, but Connie was sitting in her normal place, and Mom was sitting next to her, and Connie was crying a lot. It was obviously that she was in great pain. And I said to my mom, Mom, what's wrong with Connie? And Mama said to me, well, Jim, she has migraine headaches. She'd just been diagnosed. And I said, Mom, I never heard of that. What's, what's that, a migraine headache? And so Mom tried to explain it to me, I don't think I've ever had one, but they say it's terrible. Like they said, your head's like it's splitting in two with this kind of headache. And they gave my sister some medications, the doctor did. They'd already been trying them, and nothing was working. And Connie was in desperation. And I looked at her, and I looked at Mom, and I said, Mama, yeah, Jim, I know what you need to do. What? You need a green scapular from Our Lady for Connie. A, a what? A green scapular. Can I borrow the car and get one for Connie from the Catholic bookstore? So yes. So mom, they loaned me the car. <laughs> they were very brave, weren't they? I was a teenager. And I went and I went to the, the St. Michael's Catholic bookstore in Tampa and I got a green scapular. It cost me all of 25 cents. And I came home and we lived right across the street from the Catholic church. The scapulars need to be blessed, you see. So I went straight to father across the street. I had father bless the green scapular. He did that. It just took a moment. I'm going to show you here, in case you haven't seen one. We have a whole bundle of them here. So Father blessed one of these little green scapulars. We're going to give you one in just a moment. It has an image of Our Lady on one side and her Immaculate Heart on the other. Well, I ran back across the street. Connie is there, still in pain, still crying. I said, Mom, here it is for Connie. Connie, put this on. Connie took it and put it on. I was like maybe 15 or 16, I think it was. So Connie was about 19 or 20. She put the scapular on, 
and immediately the headache stopped. Immediately. I mean, bamus, gone. Hasta la vista, baby. Gone. Just like that. Amen? Isn't that beautiful? And it's so nice to see a miracle in your own family home. Amen? Our Catholic faith belongs in the home, the domestic church, in the home. Well, that's not the end of the story. A few months, excuse me, a few months later, I came home from school, and Connie's crying again, like three months later. She'd been perfectly healed. And I said, Connie, Mama, what's wrong with Connie? She said, Jimmy, she has the migraine headaches again. And I looked at her and said, Connie, where's your green scapular? She said to me, I lost it today. I said, Mom, I know just what we need to do. What? Can I borrow the car again? I went straight to St. Michael's Catholic Bookstore. I bought another green scapular for all of 25 cents. Went back home, went across the street, had Father bless it, gave it to Connie. Connie, put this on. She put it on, gone. And they never came back. Amen? Should we clap for Jesus and Mary? Don't you just love Jesus and Mary? Isn't it cool to know they're alive? They're not a pretty story, they're living persons, amen? They're alive. Well, fast forward, I'm a missionary priest in England, and I had to do mass in what's called the boonies, way out in the middle of nowhere on the shore of England, these three little tiny churches. And I got to one of them to say mass, and the two uh, sacristan ladies were there, they were Irish. There's a lot of Irish people who work in England. They're the most beautiful Irish brogue. I wish I could do that accent, you know. My brother could do it really well. I can't do it too great. So beautiful, their voices. They're getting the mass ready. And the one told the other, she says, come on, honey, tell father, tell father, tell him. And I said, what, what's wrong? She said, tell father. She said, oh, father. She said, it's my husband. And I said, so what else is new, you know? <laughs> I said, what about your husband? She said, well, my husband, he retired finally. After many years, he entered into his retirement. He's been looking forward to it all his life. We both were. He's now fully retired. I said, isn't that good? He said, well, Father, when I'm, he never leaves the house. He's like been retired now, I think she said for, if I remember correctly, two and a half years at that point. It was my first time at this church, two and a half years. And she said to me that, Father, he never leaves the house. When I'm home, he follows me around wherever I go. If I go to wash the dishes, he stands right next to me. He doesn't help, but he stands right next to me. If I vacuum the floor, he's right there. Father, when I go to the bathroom, he stands outside the door. I can't get rid of him. But he won't go outside if I go to the mailbox. I have to get the mail. I said, well, then get it more often. You know what I mean? She said, I don't know what to do. I said, I think I know just what you need to do. And she said, what? I said, I think you need a green scapular. <laughs> so, because he heals not just physical things, but also emotional and psychological things, you see? And so I said, let me check my jacket. I had just flown in to England for the United States of America, and there was nothing in my pocket, but I was just praying. I said, Father Flanagan taught me to do our founder. So I went to my jacket and reached in my pocket, and lo and behold, there was one green scapular in my pocket. I couldn't believe it. I said, look, here it is. This is for your husband. Now, he may not want it. <laughs> so, hide it under the chair where he sits all the time. His favorite lounge chair. So he said, hide it under the chair, and whenever you receive the green scapular, you see either the person who receives it or the person who gives it, what's to say the prayer that's printed on the back of the scapular? once a day. And it's a tiny prayer. Immaculate Heart of Mary, pray for us, now and at the hour of our death. Would you say that after me now? Immaculate Heart of Mary, pray for us, now and at the hour of our death. You got it, you see? You got it. That's all you have to do once a day. Just you say it for him. 
put it under the chair, trust this to Jesus through his mother, Mary. Okay, Father. So Mass was over. I left. I had to come back to that church for another month. We had a rotation, the priests who were there. So my turn came up again a month later. And I'm back at the three little churches in the boonies. And I go to this little church. And two sacristan ladies from Ireland are both there. And the one says, oh, Katie, Katie, tell Father, tell Father. Katie, tell him. I said, Katie, what, Katie, tell me. He says, Father, do you remember the story about my husband? I says, yes, I remember. And you gave me the green scapular? I remember. Did you hide it under his chair? I did. Did it work? Father! The next morning he got up and he went to get the mail himself. <laughs> the next morning. And then, when I went shopping later in the day, he asked me if he could come with me to the store. I said, That's great! And Father, when I went to the store the next day, he also wanted to go with me. And Father, yes, Katie, wherever I go, he follows me! Wherever I go, he's always with me! I said, well, Katie, God used me to heal the first problem. I think you're on your own on the second one now. I think I did my job already. But that's how, how well the scapular works. Amen? And it heals physical, emotional, and psychological problems. So what I want to do is I want to touch the scapulars to the tabernacle now because I always like for the great high priest, the Lord Jesus Christ, for him to give your scapular his blessing. Is that okay? I'm going to ask Father Dennis to give a little tiny one and I'm going to go to the altar. Then we're going to pass these out to you before I continue. And just in case, we'll bless both packs just in case we need them. They're already blessed, but give a simple blessing. Thank you. Sure, just a little bit. Okay, now I'm going to touch the tab and I'm going to have the boys ready to pass them out. Two or three bundles, boys. And we might need another helper or two to help the altar boys and brother so everyone can get one rather quickly. Just, just take one, I would say. Don't, don't take two or three or four right now. Just take one per person. Brother, P.O. Luke wants to help you as well. These scapulars, beloved, Our Lady gave a special instruction on them. She says you don't actually have to wear them. She said just keep them close, she said. Keep them close. You can wear them, put it in your wallet, in your purse, or even on your pillow. The Virgin said just keep it close because it's for those who are suffering. And sometimes they don't, they don't feel good wearing things, so she's very gentle about her instruction. Now remember, there's a tiny little prayer printed on the back. It might be hard to read if you're getting older and silver-haired like me, but again, it's a very simple one-line prayer. You should say it once a day. Immaculate Heart of Mary, pray for us, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Better, friends, just to take one tonight. Please don't take two or three, because we may need them for tomorrow's group as well.
Christy there, would you see if there's three more of these bundles right on the right on the shelf there? Would you raise your holy hand if you did not receive yet a green scapular, if you did not receive one? It's like we got everybody covered. We are millionaires, amen? We'll be in showery with graces from the one who loves us. These sacramentals you have are immensely powerful. Thank you, sister. Thank you, brother. Thank you so much. Thank you, sister. Now, beloved, yes, sure. I'm going to give you another gift. And I wasn't planning on it, but the Spirit is moving my heart. I think maybe you've been good boys and girls. I'm just wondering, maybe. I'm going to give you another special gift. I don't know if I have enough for everybody, but I have about 200. So I want to give you a new prayer, quote-unquote new in the Catholic Church, with an imprimatur from the bishops of Nigeria, a prayer given to a teenage boy in Africa. His name is Barnabas which means son of the encouragement. We want to give you a prayer card because our Lord and Our Lady appeared to young Barnabas in the jungle in Nigeria. I actually met with his bishop. He appeared to the young man in the jungle. And by the way, the boy was what we call technically a pagan. He had no religion whatsoever. He had never been in any church, Catholic or any other church when Jesus and Mary appeared to him in the woods. They began to appear to him every day. Would you believe Barnabas had never heard of the name Jesus or Mary? He had never even heard their names. So they began instructing him and telling him about the one golden pathway, the one true faith. It's called the Roman Catholic Church. Amen? And one day, beloved, the whole world will be Catholic. You know that, don't you? One day the whole world, in fact, Bishop Fulton J. Sheen, Venerable Sheen, prophesied that one day through Our Lady of Fatima, the entire Muslim world will become Roman Catholic. Bishop Sheen said that, but so did St. Louis de Montfort. Amen? So, beloved, you're on the winning team. We want to pray that everyone gets to know and love Jesus Christ, even those who may be Muslims or Hindus or maybe those who are atheists. We don't judge them, we love them double. Amen? So let's stop right now. One Hail Mary for all the Muslims, the Hindus, the Buddhists, and the atheists, and for CNN, to one day become converted. Is that okay? One Hail Mary for their conversion to the true faith, because there's only joy in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Jesus and his most holy virgin mother taught Barnabas the entire Catholic faith for one year. They were his catechist. At the end of one year, they told the young man, now go to the local Catholic church and present yourself to the priest and ask him for the gift of baptism. So Barnabas went to the local church. He had been in the Catholic church. And he met the priest. And he told the priest, I, I'm Barnabas and I want to be baptized. He says, well, that's great. Some, I, I don't know you. Where are you from? Well, he lived out in the woods with his family. So, okay, well, I'm, we're glad to have you. We have to give you lessons first to instruct you. He says, I already had my lessons for one year now. And the, he's the only priest in the whole area. Said, Who gave you the lessons? You know, Jesus and Mary. <laughs> what? Jesus and Mary, they gave me the lessons. Yeah, right. Yeah, they did. They told me to come and see you. The boy was so sincere, the father sat him down and gave him a test. And guess what? He knew the faith better than the priest did. You would too if Jesus and Mary were your teachers. Amen? 
Amen. Guess where he is right now? He's in the seminary studying to be a priest. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And our Lord and our Lady gave him a whole bunch of prayers called the Most Precious Blood of Jesus Devotion. They're immensely powerful. I've been deeply impressed. I'm trained as an exorcist for many years now, and I've worked with some very serious things. I'm so impressed with the power of this prayer. Now, the book is only like 100 pages, but 100 pages of prayers. I looked through the book because I wanted to find the shortest and easiest one. See, I, I know Catholics, you know what I mean? I want to find the shortest one, the easiest one. And it was with one line prayer in the back of the book under the, the chapter called Mystical Prayers. There's 11 mystical prayers. All have the imprimatur. All have the imprimatur. They're all fully approved. The whole book. I met with the Archbishop for a long time. He said, Father, spread it, he said. Spread it. Well, these prayers have the power of combating you-know-who, El Diablo, the devil. And the experiences that I've had have been nothing short than incredible or miraculous, nothing short than that. So I chose the shortest prayer, and then I asked a good friend to help me make a little card for it. So we sort of designed it. She's a graphic designer. We made it now with English on one side and Spanish on the other. And I'd like to give you this prayer and pray it with you. And here's why. Frequently, my healing from the Lord Jesus is blocked by a demonic presence. We, we speak of the spirit of infirmity, the demons of sickness. There are certain demons that will block you from getting better. I really saw it beautifully illustrated once in one of our own salt missions out west on an Indian reservation. When an Indian family, an American Indian family, came up to my brother who was the pastor, and I was visiting for just a few weeks to help them with a few problems in the parish. I was just there for a couple of weeks to preach and to heal and help with a few little things. A family came in for healing. My brother, Father Tony, said, Jim, would you take them downstairs? There was a chapel downstairs. And pray with them. Sure. So I brought the grandmother and the children and the grandchildren downstairs in front of the tabernacle and prayed over all of them. And as I prayed, God would give me a word of knowledge for each one. My energy would show me something they needed. It was very beautiful what was happening. The other kids knew when I would say something, they, they all looked like, whoa, how do you know that? God showed me what each one needs. And some of them were kind of funny, like a little girl, I prayed over her, I said, oh, you're looking for a husband, aren't you? God says, don't worry, I've got one for you. But don't look for him, look for me. Amen. Don't look for your spouse, look for God. God has your spouse. Amen? All kinds of beautiful things were happening. Some physical healings as well. About 20 members of the family, we got all done. I thought we were finished, but I looked up to see the matriarch, the grandmother who brought them all in. I said, Grandmom, don't you want a blessing too? She's just like, so the beautiful grandmothers, she wanted her children and grandchildren to be healed. She didn't think a thing about herself. She's sitting in the back, but she brought them. Grandmom, don't you want a healing tool? Yes, Father. Uh, can I pray for something for you? Oh, she's so shy. Yes, Father. And she showed me her hand, and her hand was withered in arthritis. It looked wickedly painful. And this hand was the same down here. She showed them to me. I said, Grandmom, can I pray for you? Yes, Father. So I put my two fingers on her hand to pray for healing. In the name of Jesus Christ, and I moved my hand back. Oh, Grandma, you don't have arthritis. You have a demon on you. You have a curse. It's very common in certain cultures to put curses on one another, you see. You, you don't have a sickness, you have a curse. Grandma, yes. Would you let me release you from that curse? We always work within people's free will. Amen? I'm going to be respectful, get her permission. 
But the American Indian people are very aware of the spiritual world, much more than we are. They totally believe it. She knew just what I was saying. She said, yes, Father. I said, let me take your hand again. She put her hand up all withered. And I put my fingers back on. And I said, in the holy name of Jesus Christ, I rebuke and bind the evil spirit, and I break the curse in his name. When I said that, her hand popped open. Five years of painful arthritis was healed in less than five seconds by Jesus Christ, King of kings, Lord of lords, Prince of peace, wonder counselor, God forever, Jesus Christ. Amen? Five seconds, she was healed of five years of excruciating pain. Amen? When her hand popped open, I looked down, the other hand popped open at the same time. Because he does all things well. Amen? Alleluia. Why do I mention that? Sometimes the demonic world is blocking our healing. Amen? That's why we gave you the green, the, um, the St. Benedict medal first, to bind anything evil from you. So when we pray over you, the healing can go freely. Amen? But I want to give you another gift to put the blessing on your whole family. The prayer that God himself taught Barnabas. So I'm going to ask my altar servers and brother to come up again and give one of these. I think we have 200. Do we have enough for 200, do you think? If we don't, then take them, share them like with married couples if we don't. Thank you, Father. Gracias. Sister? Thank you. Thank you, brother. <laughs> True. So you're receiving a little one-line prayer from the visionary in Africa, tested and approved by not only the bishop, but the whole bishop's conference of Nigeria has approved it. And it releases us from anything diabolical or our family. And I find in particular, this has been my own experience now for many, many years, I think we've distributed more than one million of these now, free of charge, never charge for anything. I notice it has two particular charisms, depression, healing depression, minor or major, and addiction, drugs, alcohol, pornography, anger, addictions. It has those two special graces, apparently, to heal depression, major or minor, and addictions of all sorts. Maybe the two biggest problems in our country today, amen? Maybe the two biggest problems. Many do not realize that depression has a distinctly diabolical element to it. Sometimes it's totally diabolical, sometimes it's only halfway diabolical. The devil likes to jump on my sadness. He makes a mountain out of a molehill. That's what he likes to do. You have something small, he'll make it bigger. He always lessens the glory and the respect and the honor due to God. He lessens your purity and your virtue, but he increases your sadness and your misery. This prayer dissolves his strongholds. Somebody here needs one. Would you raise your holy hand if you did not receive the red prayer card? There's two more, three, four, five on this area. On this side. Two more, brother. You need more, brother? Anybody have some left over? Here comes Father. Here comes one of the acolytes. Maybe just enough, eh? Kind of a miracle. Anybody else need one? And make sure that the father has one too and sister for their own use. And boys, you can have one. We want to pray the prayer a little bit together. I find the best way to get ready for a healing is to drive the devil out. Amen? So this prayer has only 12 words to it in English. Most, 
most precious blood of Jesus Christ, save us in the whole world. Most precious blood of Jesus Christ, save us in the whole world. Most precious blood of Jesus Christ, save us in the whole world. It's simple, isn't it? You can memorize it probably in five minutes or less. Have it memorized. You may want to take a picture on your cell phone and send it to all your contacts. And let's free all the phoenix from the evil one. Amen? Now, let's do it a couple times together. This is how I do it. Our Lady actually recommended, in fact, if you look on the back on the Spanish side, I think it's printed in the Spanish, she recommended 500 times a day. That's up to you. It's not a canon law. It's just a recommendation. Do what you can. I do it 500 times every morning, year-round. I did it this morning where I was staying. And it releases you from anything or those you're helping that day. You will feel intoxicated by the Holy Spirit. You will feel the freedom of the Lord Jesus Christ if you plead his blood over your family. When you're pleading the blood, it's, it's the sacrifice of the Mass coming into your house is what's happening, you see? Now let's do those two in particular, those two maladies in particular. Depression, I can see, I'm, I'm allowed to see certain things in the Spirit. We have an unusually a bigger number than normal of people here tonight, you're suffering with depression. I, I can see it very, very clearly. I don't mean to say necessarily major, but there's also minor depression. You know, like, you, you don't want to get out of bed in the morning, ever, you see? Or you never, you don't, you don't have major depression, like you're not under psychotropic drugs, but you're never happy. Nothing ever makes you happy. There's something wrong with that, you see? There shouldn't be. There's a lot of depression going on around the country and the world. We are under attack in a major way. And what I've seen is my work, especially as an exorcist, but I'm all over the world, is this. Satan's main attack is to drain all hope and all joy out of the church and out of the world. So we're completely hopeless and completely joyless. Isn't it true? He's trying to rob you of your joy. Don't you dare let him do that. Beginning tonight, we start praying for joy every day of your life from now on. Amen? Joy is not a nicety. Joy is a necessity. Amen? You must have joy. It's a fruit of the Holy Spirit. You can't find it at Walmart. It's a fruit of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Beginning today, pray for joy. So we're going to pray ten in a row. I'm going to say the first half. Will you please answer for all depression to leave us and for joy to take its place. Are you ready? I'm going to lead it ten times in a row. I'm going to say, most precious blood of Jesus Christ, you would answer, save us in the whole world. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, most precious blood of Jesus Christ, 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 most precious blood of Jesus Christ. 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 How do you feel? The church actually looks different. There's a light that came over your heads. I see it clearly now from three minutes ago. There's a difference already. You've got you-know-who on the run. You've got him on the run now. Let's say ten more now for anybody in your family. They're not here tonight, but they're somewhere. For anybody in your family or mine, it's in my family too, in your family or mine that's suffering from depression, ten more to set our family free. Most precious blood of Jesus Christ. 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 
most precious blood of Jesus Christ. Most precious blood of Jesus Christ. Most precious blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. So now, beloved, it's your decision, but I would encourage you to use this prayer in a major way for yourself and your family every day. Amen? Amen. It's powerful, it's safe, it's effective, it's approved. How can you go wrong? You each owe me $1 million. <laughs> Amen? You are blessed beyond measure. Now, it's also very powerful for addictions. For addictions. We're going to pray some in just a moment. I'm going to tell you a true story that happened in Texas, where we have another salt community, several there. I was serving at a parish in Texas. I was visiting to do a healing mass. But after the healing mass, I was there for a day or two. I was doing just a daily mass. After the daily mass, I was in the sacristy changing my robes, and the group of people came in for blessings. It was unannounced, but it was okay. So I prayed over like about 25 people. It took about an hour. Got all 25 done. Then I proceeded to finish removing my robe. When the sacristan lady came up to me, said, Father, there's one more. And I said, where? And she said, over there. I said, oh, come here. And the young man came up to me. I didn't recognize him. He had a three-piece suit on and a tie. He went to shake my hand, and then I recognized him. I had been to that same parish, St. Anthony's, six months previous. Same thing. I did a healing mass six months before. The day of the healing mass, in the afternoon before it started, a grandmother came into the office with her grandson. She called in advance. She was coming from a hospital. She came there. I just happened to be there. But the grandmother knew we were having a healing mass that night. They knocked on the door. My brother let them in, Father Tony. It was a young man who was dying of a drug overdose. He had just come out of the hospital. They begged him not to leave. They did not know what he had inside of him. They couldn't find what it was with the various tests that they do. But because he was in his 20s, he was legally allowed to sign himself out. The doctors and the nurses at Corpus Christi Hospital, called Spawn Hospital, they said, please don't go, you're going to die. Don't go. But he was afraid to stay because he was overdosing on illegal drugs. And in Texas, even though you're overdosing, if they find it's an illegal drug, you're arrested in the hospital. With, with police officers, with revolvers, with guns. If you can't leave the hospital, they assign one or two guards, policemen with guns, outside your door. If you get better, you go straight to jail. If you die, they say goodbye. It's really strict there. He was on illegal drugs, did not want to stay, did not want to go to the hospital or the jail. So he signed himself out. His grandmother picked him up. She took him straight to St. Anthony's Church, they're in the conference room. They say, emergency, all priests, come down to the room, the conference room, emergency, on the loudspeaker system. Five of us priests ran down. My brother was already there. I peeked in to see what the problem was. I looked in the boy's eyes, and I saw the demon. That's called the discernment of spirits. I could see the demonic presence in his eyes. I was the only one trained as an exorcist in the whole group. I said, Anthony, brothers, I'll take care of this one. They all were worn out anyway. You go rest. I'll take care of this one. I sat down with the boy and his grandmother. I said, call your dad and mom right now. I can't, Father. I can't. You have to. Oh, they, they can't find out what I'm doing. They'll kill me. I was thinking, well, you're already dying. You know what I mean? I mean, they're going to kill you. I didn't say that out loud. I says, no, no, they'll love you. They're going to help us. Call them. He finally called. They came, his mother and father. I gave mother and father and the grandmother and the boy the card you have in your hand. So we're going to pray this prayer right now. I led it 50 times. And they, we did all 500. I did the first 50. You just use your rosary beads. Go around the rosary once, that's 50. 
When I led the first 50, the boy began to scream. It was not a human scream. It's not a scream you've ever heard before. The diabolical scream came out of his bowels. It was ungodly. It was the demon screaming terror because he knew his time was up. Amen? The demon cannot come against the blood of Christ. He was screaming because he was frightened, the devil. Did all 50? I said, Dad, you lead the next 50, the father. The father led the next 50. The boy stopped screaming, but began to weep and cry like you've never seen a young man cry in your life. You could see he had a broken heart. He was dying as he cried from his guts. Dad led 50, he finished, and Mom, you lead the next 50. Mom led 50 in a row. The boy continued crying, but now it was gentle. It wasn't a loud and deep guttural cry. It was a gentle cry. Whatever it was, you see, it was being healed in stages. Hey, Grandma, you lead the next 50. Grandma led 50 in a row. Then he stopped crying completely. He just shook uncontrollably. But no more screaming or crying, just shaking. Grandma got done. I said, now, hijo, you lead us in 50. The young man led at 50 perfectly. Perfectly. He said, wow, we did 250. Let's keep going. So I led another 50. 50 for Papa, 50 for Mama, 50 for Grandma, 50 for the boy. How many was that? 500. It took us maybe 35 minutes. When the young man took the last 50, he did number 49, most precious blood of Jesus Christ, save us in the whole world. Then he did number 50. When he did number 50 and we answered, the boy looked at me and said to me, Father, it's gone! I never said anything about a devil to that group. I never mentioned anything about a demon. Not even once. I just said, let's pray. He knew what was inside of him. Amen? Believe me, they know. He said, it's gone, Father. I said, I know it's gone. Jesus just set you free. Amen? When you go home, hijo, say it 500 more times for your homework to keep it from coming back. You know what I mean? Because they always come back the next day. Well, six months later, I'm back in the church, said this a little daily mass, prayed over people. Who comes up at the very end? A young man with a three-piece suit and a tie. He looked like a movie star. He shook my hand. I didn't know who it was. He said, Father, I came back to thank you. And when he said that, I recognized him. I'm the boy that was dying. Father, you need to know something. Yes. From the moment we finished those prayers, I haven't touched one drug in six months. And the desire for the drugs has left me completely as well. Amen? Hallelujah. Is God great or is God great? Amen? Dios es grande? Amen. Beloved, God is beautiful, and he has power for all of our needs. Amen? Now, let's say this ten times in a row for anybody in this church tonight who's struggling with any form of addiction, whether it's alcohol or anything else. Let's pray for that release from addiction. Are you ready? Most precious blood of Jesus Christ. 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 Amen. How do you feel? You're getting better looking every five minutes. Now, we're going to do ten more for your family members. Now, I know we all have someone, don't we? We all have somebody addicted to alcohol or drugs. Everybody does. We're going to pray now for their liberation. You don't need to pray over them. Don't do that. Let the exorcists do that. But you can pray for them with this prayer from a distance. People are set free all the time from this prayer. 
I'm going to have you lead me now, ten times in a row, for anybody in our family is addicted to drugs or alcohol or anything else. You lead me now, most. Save us and the whole world. 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 Amen? You know what to do now. Amen? So what we're going to do now, beloved, oh, the Spirit's moving my heart. I'm sorry. He's telling me we have to pray for Phoenix. Now, I don't, I don't know what's here. Oh, that's, isn't that something? I just get the anointing now over me. This prayer, uh, our sister was reminding us there was a satanic conference here. Is that right, just recently? So that must be what he's trying to tell me. He says, pray for Phoenix. We need to pray for our hometown. That's actually biblical, you know, to have loyalty to your hometown and your home country. Let's pray for Phoenix now. Anything demonic that was brought in, we push right out by the blood of Christ. Amen? Amen. And not just pushed out, pushed down to hell. Amen? Amen? So let's pray now for Phoenix, ten in a row, anything demonic to go. Amen? Amen. Would you stand with me, friends, please? We have to take authority over this. Now that's the Holy Spirit. See, I'm even aware of that. He said, pray for Phoenix. Let's pray now. It's a deliverance prayer that you just learned. We're going to take authority. Let's do all 12 words together 10 times over the city of Phoenix. All together. Most precious blood of Jesus Christ, save us and the whole world. Most precious blood of Jesus Christ, save us and the whole world. Most precious blood of Jesus Christ, save us and the whole world. Most precious blood of Jesus Christ, save us and the whole world. Most precious blood of Jesus Christ, save us and the whole world. Most precious blood of Jesus Christ, save us and the whole world. Most precious blood of Jesus Christ, save us and the whole world. Most precious blood of Jesus Christ, save us and the whole world. Most precious blood of Jesus Christ, save us and the whole world. Most precious blood of Jesus Christ, save us and the whole world. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. I'm going to entrust, brothers and sisters, the robe of Padre Pio to our good father, Father Dennis. He's going to hold it in his hands, and we're going to line up, brother as well, and the two altar boys. We're going to have four men standing in a row, each with their own relic. So Father will have Padre Pio's robe, and Father's going to stand on the left there. I don't know, Brother Ryan or Father, should we move these out of the way, you think, or keep them? Maybe the boys can move the kneelers and the table out of the way. Maybe one over here where I'm going to be standing, maybe one over here, just for myself. And I'm going to put oil on your forehead. Boys, you can move those out. Then I'm going to entrust to Brother Ryan a first-class relic, which means a bone, from the one pope I know of in modern times who had the gift of healing. His name is St. Pope Pius X. He had a healing ministry as pope. John Paul did too, by the way. 
So Brother Ryan's going to have this in his hand, and you'll go first to father and then to brother. You touch them with one or both hands. Then with our altar boys, first we're going to have St. Charbel. This is a first class relic. I mean, it's a bone, the bone from St. Charbel. And brother's going to have this in his hand, and he'll stand next to brother there. And then lastly, we have another first class relic. This is the blood of St. Hannibal. In Italian, Annabali. Have you heard of Luisa Picaretta? This is her spiritual director. This is the priest who gave the first imprimatur to the writings of the divine will. He was canonized by John Paul, and for some reason, this little relic is the most powerful of all of them. Amazing. This is his blood here. He's a Catholic priest and a canonized saint, and this young man will stand here. So what you're going to do, my dear friends, we might need an usher or two to help us, but when you come up, I'm going to place the Lord on the altar, so make sure you bow to the Lord. You'll come to Father Dennis and touch the robe. You touch St. Pope Pius X. Then St. Charbel. And then St. Hannibal. They say Anibale in Italy. You touch all four of those, you will feel the anointing of the Holy Spirit, because I'm feeling it right now like I'm going to fall over. You will feel the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Then if you'd like to, you'd come stand or kneel, and I'm going to place some blessed oil, blessed by the bishop, on your forehead to seal your healing in the Holy Spirit. Amen? This is not the sacrament of anointing. We don't do that in this big crowd like this, but it's still awesomely powerful. You're going to touch four relics, come up with the oil on your forehead. Do we have a couple of ushers to help us to keep, or maybe Father can help us? Okay? Just to keep things um, orderly, sister. So I'm not sure, Father, what order would you like to go in? Just, just start from the... Should we just... Yes. Okay, so maybe come right here, but start with Father. Sure, if anybody's in a wheelchair with crutches, they can come up first. I am. Put the, if you put the table sure. here. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine. Let's pray the Lord's Prayer together to ask God the Father to heal us through his Son, Jesus, and in the power of the Spirit. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. It's always best to ask the mother of the Eucharist to intercede too to her son for our healing. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. 
and glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. And now the first ones can begin. Thank you, sister. 